problem. We should try to seek help. But yeah, I, was, I, uh, I talk a lot about my weight on stage. And uh, people have been asking me, Dan, if you keep losing weight, what are you going to talk about on stage? What are your jokes going to be about? I say, I don't know. I, could, uh, I was overweight for 31 years. I could talk about all that. Or maybe I could uh, you know, write other material. I say, well, what if you can't? What if you can't be funny anymore? I don't know why they get so angry about it. But what, if, what if you can't be funny anymore? What if you lose all that weight and you're not funny? What are you going to do then? I don't know, have sex again? <laughs> Maybe go for a walk? <laughs> See my dick? I don't know, I have options. It'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, I went to lose weight for a lot of reasons, not the least of which are the physical limitations, of which there are many. I have a very hard time being. That's it, just being. Uh, but I thought that people treat you differently when you're overweight. Like, I was on a, I was on a cigarette break once at work. And I was outside with my coworkers, it was like the middle of a blizzard, and they're shivering, and I'm shivering. And they look at me and they're like, well Dan, we know why we're cold, but why are you cold? Because I'm a person? And they're like, no, no, I mean just like like whales and polar bears, they don't get cold. Did you guys just compare me to animals that were like engineered by nature over millions of years to survive subarctic temperatures? Like, are you surprised when lunchtime comes and I'm not feeding a seal? Sorry guys, I'm on a diet. Just thank you for me. That was weird. I took a sip of water and ice went in my mouth. Which normally would be weird, but when you're on stage, you have to spit it out. That was awkward. So I was talking about it, apparently. Oh uh, yeah. I'm uh want to lose weight, like I said, for health reasons and also because I'm single for the first time in my adult life. Which is terrifying. Anybody else here single? It sucks, doesn't it? It's the worst. That wow, that really came off sad and not funny. I'm sorry. I'm really not that sad. I mean I'm sad but not that sad. <laughs> I hate when Russell laughs at stuff like that. It makes me feel just like a hundred times worse. Uh, but yeah, I was, uh, I'm single, I'm, I'm going through a divorce. And uh, a lot of my friends and family have been giving me advice on how to get through it. I was, a couple days ago I was talking to my brother and a friend of mine about how to get back out there. And my brother said, you know, don't even worry about anything. You're single, you're getting divorced. Just get out there, have sex with the first woman you can. Not bad advice. My buddy looked at me and said, oh, hold on a second, Dan. Do you really want pity sex? Yeah, absolutely. Why would, you want to know why? I'm pretty sure a pity vagina feels exactly the same as a regular one. <laughs> I don't know if you know, if she's like, well, Dan, I, I'm really not in, that into you. I just felt bad. The cum doesn't just fly back into you. <laughs> get back out there, they talk to women, it's rough. I was, uh, I was talking to this girl I work with, really, really attractive girl, way out of my league. And it was actually going really well, she was super pretty and she was really into me. And uh, you know, I'm like, oh, damn, you got this, just be yourself, be charming, make her laugh, give her a compliment. That was what was in my head. What came out of my mouth was, you smell like the ocean. <laughs> that is the proper response, people. It was horrible. I told one of my friends, like, damn, you can't talk to women like that. You have to be assertive. You have to let them know what the fuck you want. All right. Next time I saw her, I walked right up to her and said, hey, how would you like to lick yourself out of my beard later? Fucking brown hands are already touching. 
bringing my own mic. Where are you from again? I'm bringing my own mic next time. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've been trying to date, and I'm trying to get in touch with my romantic side. I normally just jump right into the show, but I have to address one table real quick. Uh, our poet's here. Where the hell's Carlton at? He's right uh, there. So you guys take this shit pretty seriously, your poetry, right? Like, it means a lot to you? Nah, fuck those people. Right to split. Oh, that's good. She just would have fucking hated me in a second. Oh, yes. Yes. So guys, I, um... I wanted to get in touch with my romantic side, so I started writing poetry. Turns out poetry is fucking hard. A lot of words and shit. And uh, I decided to try haikus. Oh no. Oh no. Christ. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try some haikus. If you guys don't know what it is, it's a three line poem. Yes, 575, thank you. This is not a call and response thing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to read my poetry to you. Tell me what you think. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Some haikus about love. I drown in your eyes. Your beauty captivates me. I will pay for sex. <laughs> By the way, these fucking amateurs don't know. Yeah, if you want to fucking snap your fingers afterwards, that is also acceptable. Because I'm a pompous piece of shit. <laughs> your mouth pressed against mine. Your hands explore unmapped lands. Sorry, I just came. What wonder is this? Life blooms within your belly. Here's a coat hanger. It's an abortion joke, guys. Those kids are a fucking player. Really? Why are you sad You are my whole world. My soul yearns for your embrace. Also, I have AIDS. <laughs> All right. So this last one I, I, I just started working on. Still working out the kinks. So guys, tell me what you think, all right? I, I welcome feedback. I thought I loved you. Then you fucked Matt, you slut. I hope Slider's hatching your vagina and he has tiny penis. Really? Sorry, right, but... <laughs> you guys all friends with my ex-wife? <laughs> That's cool, she's not that bad. I think she's a Fucking hell. Yeah, that guy. What she did? Yeah. You say, F that guy? <laughs> You know, this isn't a movie. If you start looking around, like people still know you talk. <laughs> it's like when you say something, like in a TV show, the other people don't hear it. That doesn't happen in real life. We all hear it. It does happen. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Just stop. Oh God. Shh. <laughs> I've, uh, I have been trying to date, though. I have, I've gone on dates. I did some online dating. Anybody do online dating? Tinder! What? Oh, Tinder. You look like a Tinder kind of guy. <laughs> that makes sense. That's all I know, though. Cupid. Okay, Cupid. Yeah. Okay, Chubby. That's what my friends call you. Where's the hell of all the chicks on the Did you just say, okay, Chubby? <laughs> Why? Why are the chicks on there fat? Because all the chicks on there are fat. Okay. That's fine. No <laughs> fat guys on there, apparently. So I'm on OK Cupid. And I'm fat. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I met a girl on OKQ. It kind of went pretty well. She was really nice. I liked her. We were getting along. Uh, but the thing was, she's a lot of people my age, I'm 31, a lot of people my age, they're ready to settle down. I'm not. I'm getting divorced. I want to take things slow. I want to meet people. She starts trying to get me to commit to things that are like a month or two months or even a year in advance that I don't want to do. And I tell her that. I say, listen, I like you. I think things are going well, but can we take it a little slow? Her response to that is to text me one morning and tell me that she made me her emergency contact at work. That is fucking terrifying. You understand how scary that is. Here's the thing, guys. I did not realize that I am qualified to identify somebody's remains after four dates and a blowjob. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good start, though. Well, that's breaking. A weird slope, that one. <laughs> I, yeah, I like four dates. So that seems like very quick to have to do something. I think it's her doctor. I'm not sure. Can I see the top of her head, please? <laughs> you know what? Just open her mouth. We'll get to the bottom of this. No, it was okay. It wasn't her. No tongue right These applause breaks are really weird. I uh, started dating a singer at one point. That was pretty person. <laughs> started dating a singer. It's weird, dating, a, dating somebody who's into uh, performing arts is weird, because you don't know, if you meet them before you see them perform, you have no idea what they're going to be like. They could be an awesome performer, like one of our great comedians. They could be Carlton. You don't know what you're going to I'm sorry, dude, was that mean? No, no, just none of those were haiku. <laughs> uh, haiku are Japanese nature poems. Those were senru, sir. What the fuck are you talking about? Go <laughs> tuck in your shirt, asshole. <laughs> that New York shit. <laughs> yeah, I was dating the singer. And guys, here's the thing. Uh, I was terrified because you don't know if somebody's going to be good or not. Thankfully, she was a very good singer, so I didn't have to like go through that awkward thing where I tell her she's good when she sucks. But I wanted to show her that I was into her. And I didn't know how to. Like, how, what kind of grand romantic thing can I do to show her that I like her? And then it hit me. I downloaded all of her music. Illegally. She wasn't very happy with it. Didn't talk to me after that. Well, she did. I had to send her letters through the RIAA. That was kind of me. Not expecting nothing about that, are I uh, started dating another girl. Guys, question.